Well, that's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we're looking at the engine, the Ride, whatever they call it. Um, it's a company from the Netherlands, Holland to the rest of the world, who know it as Holland. Um, and there's a guy called René at work who's um, from the Netherlands and he told me how to pronounce it and it's, yeah. Right then, so. I've had one or two stabs at doing this video and I was not impressed um, with the quality of the uh, demonstration that I was giving. So I've opted to, uh, well I spent more time doing it basically, um, but then I ran out of time and so on and you don't want to hear about all that drama. Yeah, so they made quite a few claims and all the rest of it, so let's read out a couple of what they are first. So, they talk about condensed lubrication, now I'm not entirely sure what that means that is actually quite important in all this it says less shear resistance now their website to say they made such a groundbreaking thing um their website really is pretty cack um they haven't got someone to translate it properly and so on but it says there's like one to eight points or something and one of the ones that are interesting are less shear resistance due to a non-tilting piston we'll explain that Cooler engine because no gases in the combustion uh, crankcase. More power due to cleaner ignition in combustion uh, with higher RPM and higher durability uh, due to the oiling. Um, it's a square engine, so basically we're going to look at the design, not particularly exactly that engine. It's a 125 carton engine, they're doing that to try and sell them to get them out there. The price. Let's talk about the price first, and I'll explain that because this is one that most of the lot of the comments are. So the price is six thousand seven hundred and fifty euros, um, which is six grand in pounds and uh, um, seven point nine k in dollars, which is fucking expensive for a one two five. Um, but it, it's to recover R and D costs and so on. So, you know, it is going to be expensive. Now, there are a few things that it does claim. Um, it's a square engine, is the, the go kart 50, uh, 125. They're then going on saying they're going to do multiple cylinders and V6s and all the rest of it. 15 years development, blah. It's pretty much all it has. Part of it shows you some dyno graphs that are getting a roundabout 65 horsepower, which I do not believe even at the crank. We'll go into why. Um, you say, well, there's a dyno graph, but oh, fucking hell, I'll draw you a dyno graph of a 125 that's got 6 million horsepower. You know what I mean? It's not that hard to change, well, anything really, the scale on the side or whatever. Um, it just, that's obviously at the crank, but even then it, it doesn't make that much sense. But, what I'll do is I'll bring you in a bit closer so you can see this fully, and then we'll go through the design. Now, as usual, I don't know how this deviates from the actual go-kart engine they have. This is all their patents and all the other information and stuff that I've been looking at. Now, there's one or two funky pictures that deviate from this. I'm not entirely sure what is real and what isn't. Um, I don't know why they're hiding it, and I don't know why on their website they've got the pat you know the patents. I don't know why they aren't bragging and showing you animations of exactly what happens inside. But this is what I've been managed to find out. And we're basically just going to have to go from there. Right then, so the way this thing works is, and this is take two because I fucked it up before. <laughs> um, is basically the piston comes down like this and then you uncover these ports here. Now the, the room beneath, the room beneath here is now being compressed as soon as you start closing off the exhaust port. Then this volume in here, so it's basically like a band because you're sealed here, there's a ring here that seals. So you've got a band, literally like a, well a band, I don't know how else to say that. And as the piston descends down like this, it compresses this, this volume is getting smaller and smaller, and it squidges through these ports, which look like this from the side, and then open into here. So then it goes all the way down there. And it actually does sit on this ledge like that and squish completely. So now you, that's it. As much as you can transfer a pad, what's obviously in the transfer ports. And then obviously you come on your way up, and then you basically close the transfer port up, so then the volume in here is increasing, so then you have a carb, and you'll have a carb basically off here like this. Um, I'm just 
trying to show you what the ports look like and what their path is in a sense. So then obviously your piston comes up, it closes off your exhaust port and then bang and away you go and choo 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 choo. All good. But the problem is, is obviously you are still, as soon as you uncover this transfer port, you're transferring into the cylinder and some of it's going to piss out. So that's why they require a regular exhaust. A uh, regular two-stroke exhaust with expansion chamber because they still require that because they're still pissing exhaust gas um, fuel out into the exhaust. Still going to have that um, emissions problem of raw hydrocarbons eventually making it outside into the world. The other thing that the Dewey you'll notice is that it has normal piston ring grooves like a normal piston ring. What it does have, I can zoom that out a bit now because my head's kind of been cropped. Uh, what it does have on this piston side skirt is. There's a piston, there's a ring in a sense, but the ring is actually in the body of the uh, cylinder. It's not part of the piston because it needs to choke this piston at the same point. So as you go all the way to top dead centre, it's got a seal here, and then when you come down, it's still got a seal all the way there, so it's got to remain in the same place. So that ring is in the body of the cylinder and isn't part of the piston ring set that's in here. All the rest of it, this crankcase is now sealed by this ring. All the rest of it here is still going to have pumping. They will use that pumping in here, um, well, what it says in the pan, they use that pumping um, to do basically like a splash system where it has a pipe work and filtration. It's not really that important, that bit. It just means that you have now, like I said in a video before, you have now separated the bottom and the top end, which means that you don't have to use oil but that is the problem they said what did they say their exact wording was it's, it's weird uh, condensed lubrication I'm not entirely sure at the end of the day your pistons are still rubbing these rings here can be sealed and have an oil seal in these piston rings here are still rubbing up and down your cylinder so they are being lubricated somehow now is this some kind of uh, coating some wearable lubrication coating on the actual cylinder if so when it wears where is that going it's going to get burned obviously at some point the other thing is as well is how long does that last it's all right for a car engine for now and they're very shady about this i haven't seen any uh, any real pattern um hint of what that actually is this kind of coating or whatever they're trying to use because that is the problem is that you still have um, rings rubbing here and rings rubbing here you know and you could put scraper rings on there but then where's the oil coming from you're putting pure fuel in this does this thing only last long enough for kart races you know where they're swapping pistons and cylinders all the time regardless I'm not entirely sure what's exactly what's happening now you might see on some of the actual pictures of the engine there's a bulge in the center I think that bulge is this section so basically it is a regular cylinder um, with some extra porting, but this bulge section with this ring is actually in that section there. So when you do scrap a cylinder, you're not scrapping this entire bottom end with this sexy ring seal and all the rest of it. You can basically just take the, the cylinder with the double ports in and bin that and just bung another one on top. Um, the price tag, you know, I fuck knows what they're uh, charging for replacement cylinders and all the rest of it, but that is something that has to be taken into consideration. I like this idea, it's a good idea. I'd love to know what this oil system is all about, this condensing lubrication or whatever it is. Um, I will still do some digging and all the rest of it. Um, it's a, you know, it is a good approach. Is it going to save two strokes? Like I said, I need to know more about this lubrication before I make my mind up about that. The other problem I have as well is that the massive, massive power levels, 65 horsepower. Now, the Motor GP 125 engines were lucky if you were getting 55 out of it. Car engines, quite regularly, Rotax ones and all of it, regularly 125s regularly stick out around about 30 horsepower, 35, some of the best ones. Um, now, that is at the dyno, but the losses, because it's such a small gearbox, um, the losses um, in these engines, these go-kart engines, aren't that much. It has not gone from 60 at the crank to 30 at the wheels. That would be fucking terrible. I reckon they lose maybe four, three, four, five horsepower. So they're claiming 65 horsepower with this thing. There was another claim I also saw about them saying they go up to 30,000 RPM. If you rev the absolute shit out of this, you can make any engine keep on going, um, just as long as you can, in a sense, force induction, as long as you can keep on giving it air. 
and design it to have such a broad power range, but you can keep on going faster and faster and faster, but your reliability just drops off a cliff. Um, so I don't know if that's what they were doing. Were they doing a, basically a, a limit test? So they got up to 30,000 RPM, it still didn't destroy itself. Piston speeds at that speeds and the G-forces are fucking immense. Like, literally amazing. Um, but it all comes down. There's nothing inherent in the design. The, the design should actually be slower. It should actually be slower because, and it should actually, in theory, be less power. The reason why is because you've, one, got extra friction from these rings. Now, it did talk about in their blurb, it did say, I've just got to get the wording right. Um, one of the points they did make was the uh, less shear resistance due to a non-tilting piston. What that means is because they've got rings top and bottom, there's basically hardly any piston slap whatsoever. So the piston really does behave in a linear action. Um, because that, that's what they mean by uh, less shear resistance, so there's less of this guffing into the sides of the walls and all the rest of it. However, anything that you make up from not having piston slap, you are going to lose by having the extra friction at this pinch point here. So it has got two piston rings for a two stroke. It has got this extra ring at the bottom. The other thing is as well is the additional mass. Um, not only have you just made this thing taller, but the additional mass of the piston, you've got to remember, this is the reciprocating mass. Um, you know, and yes, the, the crankshaft and all the rest of it is lubricated. Yeah, it does help, you can push it further. But I just think 65 horsepower at the crank uh, is massive numbers. I'd much rather, I'd have to see that verified by someone else independently. That just sounds like way too high. It might be that when you calculate the 30,000 horsepower run when you get the torque and then the horsepower, 30,000 is a big fucking number, you know, it's twice what it should be generally. Um, it just seems like an awful lot. I'm just, I just think that that dyno run was their destructive run and they probably popped a few engines doing it. I, I don't know, like I said, I've only got so much information to go by. It's just that 65 horsepower out of a 125 is fucking ridiculous. And people are probably going to comment and say, well, that's because it's a unique design and blah, blah, blah. Well, the fact of the matter is, is it's a heavier design. The reciprocating masses are higher. Um, friction's debatable, like I say. Uh, there's nothing about this that makes it absolutely, oh my god, that should be that fast. Hope that makes sense. We'll probably end up having a part two of this because people have loads of questions and what have you. And I'll see you in a bit.